Today I'm branching out of my comfort zone, trying something a little bit different, and we're gonna be using napkins to do it. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Liz, if you guys are new here. Today we're gonna to be doing DIYs with tissue paper and napkins. So many fun designs, so many cute DIYs. So I'm gonna show you how to do today. I picked up all of my napkins and tissue paper from Hobby Lobby to create these super pretty designs. I have never done a whole bunch of decoupaging before. I know that it's super popular and so many people do it. It's new for me. I'm gonna try it out, see what I think. So if you wanna see the DIYs that I make using tissue paper and napkins, then let's get started. For this DIY, we are going to grab a 12 inch wood round from the Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna start by painting it with one coat of my Waverly chalk paint in white. I grabbed these napkins from Hobby Lobby. They were $5.99 plus 50% off, so $3 for the pack. I'm gonna take the second ply off of the napkin and I'm going to divide my circle in half using some painter's tape. I'm gonna apply Mod Podge to the bottom half of my wood round. Make sure to get the entire thing saturated and then we are going to let that Mod Podge fully dry. You could use a heat gun that isn't a super powerful setting to speed up the drying process or you can just leave it alone and let it dry. I'm going to add my napkin right on top, add some parchment paper on top of that, and then I'm going to take my mini heat press and go over the entire thing. You could also just use your regular household iron if you'd like but I'm going to kind of work from the middle outwards to make sure I'm getting no bubbles. This is going to reactivate your Mod Podge, and I found that this really helped with wrinkling and bubbles. I'm usually not a fan of decoupaging or using Mod Podge because my paper always ends up crinkly or whatever I'm using. This is like a foolproof way to make sure that you are going to have no wrinkles or bubbles and I think this worked fantastic. This was the very first time that I did it and I was so pleasantly surprised by the outcome. To remove the remaining napkin, I just took some sandpaper and sanded off the edges. I'm gonna add some faux shiplap and to do that, I'm gonna take this wooden paint stir stick as my guide and a little bit of some brown paint and I'm going to draw myself some lines using that stir stick as a guide and I just go until I hit the very top. I'm also going to add some vertical lines in there as well. I just kind of did these at random. There was really no pattern to it. Once I have those drawn on there, I'm also going to do little dots using the back of my paintbrush to kind of mimic some nail holes in the wood. And I just did this for every vertical stripe. I added a bit of distressing to my sign as well. So I went around the entire circle with that same brown paint. And then I also dragged my brush towards the middle of the sign to add some more distressing to it. So you can make this as distressed as you want. You don't have to do it as distressed as I did if you like a more clean look to it but I just went around the entire thing, kind of did some dashes throughout the middle, and then I took some sandpaper to it to give it more of a faded look. I am going to add a chocotour transfer to this. You could do some vinyl, you could do stickers, you could do really whatever you want to do, but this was just the easiest thing for me to do, the easiest and quickest. So I added my chocotour surface wax to the top. This helps prevent bleeding when I'm using my silk screen transfers. I'm gonna be using the welcome to our nest transfer, but I'm only going to be using the word welcome for the to our nest, I just added the backing back to it so that it wouldn't stick down to my tissue paper. I haven't sealed it yet, and I didn't want the stickiness of the transfer to rip up any of that paper. So I just added the backing underneath the to our nest, added some storm chalk paste, and then there you have it. I have this super cute welcome word, and it was super easy to do if you're ever interested in Chocotour. It's always linked down below. I'm going to make a cute bow with this. So I grabbed this mesh ribbon that I found at Hobby Lobby, cut a piece of that off. 
I have two more pieces of ribbon that actually I believe also came from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to layer these on top of each other doing the cross pattern for the bow and then I'm going to take some twine, bunch the ribbons up in the middle and tie the twine around the middle. Once it's tied with a double knot in the back, I'm gonna layer that on top of our green mesh ribbon. Again, bunching everything in the middle, taking some more twine, tying that in the back, and then I am going to tie the ribbon around and around and around until I have a nice big chunky twine middle that looks super cute paired you know with this ribbon style I think it was adorable next I'm going to take some lamb's ear I didn't want mine quite as full as these picks from Walmart were so I cut some pieces off I'm taking some floral wire and tying these two together in the middle then I'll go ahead and glue this down to the middle of my sign at the top I just kind of picked some leaves here and there and glued that down using some hot glue. I'll go ahead and add some hot glue to the middle, add my bow, and then there were some spots that kind of looked a bit sparse. So I did take some of those leaves from the pieces that we cut off and just kind of added them randomly where I felt like it needed a little extra leaves. So I glued those down and that is it for this DIY. You could add your hanger back to it, hang it on a door. You could attach it to a wreath. I think this is so cute. And I love the way the napkin turned out on this sign. I am definitely going to be using this technique in a lot more of my DIYs. So if you see it a lot, it's because I'm obsessed. We now sell home decor on our website, which I'm so excited about. You can find signs like these, you can find tumblers and other sorts of home decor pieces all on our website, moredecalandecor.com. So if you wanna see all the fun things that we now offer on our website, I will leave it linked down below or you can head to moredecalandecor.com. For this DIY, we are going to grab four of the little wooden pallets that you can find at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna start by lining them up in a row and adding some painter's tape to the half of it. And for the bottom half, I'm going to go ahead and paint the entire thing white. I want to make sure that I have a nice clean line when I'm doing this. And I want all of my lines to match up, which is why I line them up all in a row. I'm going to paint the fronts white. I'm also going to paint the backs white as well. So when you see the back, it's not just the plain wood. It's actually a color. And then for the top half of our little palettes, I'm going to use my Waverly Wax and Antique to give it a stained look. And then I do go in between those slats as well. You are going to repeat these steps for all four of your wood palettes. Next, I'm going to grab some Mod Podge. I am going to Mod Podge on all of the white. Now, the reason we're painting these white is so that when we put our napkins on, the image is nice and clear and you can see it. The white just adds a really nice background to it. So I grabbed these napkins again from Hobby Lobby. I loved the greenery on this. So I'm going to add my napkin down to the bottom half where the white paint is. Once that Mod Podge is completely dry, We'll add our napkin on top, add parchment paper on top of the napkin, and then go over it with our easy press or your iron if you don't have an easy press. And we are just going to reheat up that glue so that the napkin sticks to it. Now I'm going to take my sandpaper, go around the entire thing. I did use my X-Acto knife to cut in between each of those slats, and I did use my sandpaper to get the excess paper off between those slats. You want to be really careful when you're doing the slat pieces in between because the paper can rip pretty easily. I did have a couple pieces rip but I did just fix it with some Mod Podge to lay it back down. So just take your time and try your best not to rip between each of those slats if possible. Once all the excess paper was removed, I did go back over the top with some Mod Podge. Again, just to make sure that any pieces that may have ripped are going to stick down and then just to 
you know, make it so that I have a nice long lasting piece. I'm going to start assembling my pieces to make a box. So I'm going to put glue on one end and butt it up to the other end of two of my palette pieces. And then I'm just going to continue that process of butting each piece up together. I did take some hot glue and reinforce each piece with a bit of hot glue where they met on the sides. And I will just continue to butt these up together until I have a box. I'm gonna take some of this ribbon, this came from the Dollar Tree, and I am going to wrap this around my box and cover up the seam where the paper meets the wooden stained part. And I'm gonna glue this all the way around. I'm also gonna take that same ribbon and tie it in a super simple bow. Just taking two loops and tying them together like you would your shoes, messing with the loops a little bit until you find the perfect size bow that you want. And then I just glued this right down to the middle of my box, added some greenery inside, and now you have this cute little planter that I think is adorable. You could also use this as like a lantern, put a fake candle inside, turn it on. I think that would look really pretty as well, but I think this is super fun and you only spent, you know, maybe $5, $6 on the entire piece and you have a really pretty home decor piece. For this DIY, you are gonna take some napkins. Again, these came from Hobby Lobby. And this little house piece also came from Hobby Lobby. It was $2.99, but if you didn't want to go to Hobby Lobby and buy it, you could also just cut a piece of wood into a house shape. I'm gonna take this napkin and I couldn't get the pieces apart. So one trick that I'm sure everybody knows is to take two pieces of tape on either side and pull it apart and that will help get the plies apart. And I am going to start by painting the house white. I painted the front and the back and the sides all in the white color. Again, just giving it a nice bright base so that the image on your napkin truly shines through and it's not getting lost in a different colored background. Uh, I just find that the white helps everything pop just that much more. And then you're going to go ahead and use some Mod Podge. I just use glossy Mod Podge for all of this. Um, I wasn't too worried about it since it's being covered up. But any kind of outside layer that you're going to put on top of your uh, napkins. I personally like the matte look, but you can do whatever finish that you want. I just prefer the matte if I am going on top of the napkin. Now I'm going to make sure that Mod Podge is all the way dry, add my napkin on top, add some parchment paper on top of that, and then we're going to go ahead and heat up our glue just using my mini easy press and going over the entire thing. And one thing I've learned is the trick is to not leave it on there too long so your napkin doesn't burn. I had a couple times <laughs> where there were a little bit of burn marks, so I'm still trying to figure out the best, you know, ways to do it, how long I should be doing it. Um, and you know, it's all very new to me, but I think that everything turned out really cute. So this one is one of my favorites. Again, you're just going to go around the entire thing once your piece has cooled down with some sandpaper to remove all the excess paper from around your piece. I took some twine as an added embellishment and just wrapped it around my piece about three times, trying to bunch it up all in one side. And then I tied a cute little bow on the one side, glued it down so it was stuck in place. And that is it for this one. Really easy, super simple, but I love the look of this. I love the sunflowers. I love the stripey pattern. I think the whole thing is just adorable. For this DIY, we are going to take one of the wood pile rounds. This is $3.49 and it comes in a pack of two. We're also going to take the half circles. These all come from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to take four of those half circles. We're going to start by gluing those down to the bottom. I'm just using some wood glue super glue and I just eyeballed. I tried to get everything, you know, as even as I could. <laughs> but you know, it doesn't ever turn out perfect. So you're just going to add your feet to the bottom. We're going to make a cute little riser or a candle, um, you know, 
holder. You can set your Bath and Body Works candles down on top of it. I'm going to start by painting the entire thing white, front, back, and all the sides. I'm going to add my Mod Podge to just the top of this circle, just that top layer, not going below that layer at all, getting a nice amount of Mod Podge on there, letting it completely dry. These napkins, again, came from Hobby Lobby. They are $4.99, but 50% off. And I am going to remove the back portion of the napkin, getting it down just to that one ply, adding my napkin on top, parchment on top of that. You know the drill by now. And then using my mini press to go on top of it. Now, I did run into an issue with this project. I must not have let my napkin cool all the way before I added the top layer of Mod Podge on. So I did go around first with some sandpaper, removed all the edges. Now I wanted the top portion to be protected since I was gonna put things on top of this. But again, I must not have let it completely cool down because I did end up with a lot of bubbles on one side. The napkin really bubbled up and it just did not look super great. So I had taken my finger to it to try to push down on it ended up ripping the napkin and I thought okay maybe I'll just try this again but I didn't want to have to go through all the steps of trying it again so okay what how can I go ahead and save this project I decided to start removing the napkin that was all bubbled up on it trying to rip pieces off until everything was nice and stuck down and there were no more pieces overhanging on it I did go back over it with a layer of Mod Podge to make sure that everything was nice and stuck down. And then I'm going to take some brown paint and I am going to try and make this look distressed. So wherever the paper ripped off, I'm going over it in a dry brushing technique using some brown paint and just wanting this to look nice and just kind of weathered a bit. So I'm going over all the edges. I'm going to dry brush on all the sides just to really make this look, uh, you know, nice and old and antiqued. So that is what I did to try to save it. Let me know what you would have done to try to save it or if you just would have completely started over <laughs> because I was really tempted to, but I think that in the long run, it still turned out really cute. And I think that candles on top of this are really pretty or whatever else you may wanna put on this, I think it still looks really fun. For this DIY, you're going to need a couple of different pieces. You are going to need a wooden square. I got this from Michael's, I believe, and I think it was about a dollar. You're going to need some of those wood candlesticks that you can get from Hobby Lobby. And these wood rounds are actually scrap pieces that I had in my stash. Um, but you could go to the Dollar Tree and pick up their garden pendants or their garden ornaments, I think that they're called. I'm going to add some glue to the bottom of my tall candlestick. Add it to the top of my short candlestick and make one longer candlestick. And then I'm going to paint my wooden square with my Waverly chalk paint in white, making sure I get the front, the back, and all four sides. I will add some Mod Podge to the front of my square, just spreading that out to make sure the entire thing is nice and saturated in Mod Podge. And I will leave that to the side to dry while I work on painting the other pieces. So for my wooden round and my candlesticks, I'm going to use my Waverly Chalk paint in ink. And I just gave the top of my circle one good coat. And then I painted my candlestick in black as well. I'm going to take these napkins. This was in their spring section, so $4.99 and I believe 40% off. Again, I'm going to remove the back ply from the napkin so I just have that one ply of napkin and then I'm going to lay that down on top of my square after the Mod Podge is completely dry add my parchment paper on top and then heat it all up using my Cricut Easy mini press 
just going over the entire thing until that glue is nice and stuck to my napkin. I'm going to take my farmhouse summer 6x6 paper pad. This is actually available for purchase on my website, which is linked down below, or you can go to moredecalanddecor.com. And I'm going to take one picture out of here. I like that this has some kind of scrapbooky type pictures that you can use, and I like personally using them for decor. So I cut myself out one of those pictures, and I'm going to add some glue to the back. I'm going to center that in the middle of my sign. And I did go around all the edges with some Mod Podge to make sure everything was nice and stuck down. And then I did want to give this a distressed look. So I'm going to take my Waverly Wax and Antique. I go around all the edges just very lightly at first. I want to make sure that I'm not going to overboard too fast. So I kind of work my way up to how distressed I want this to be. I go over all four sides and then after I've done that I decide I want it to look a bit more distressed so in a dabbing motion I'm going over all the edges just up and down dabbing that wax on top of the edge and then I also go ahead and distress all the edges of the actual square just going around all the edges and the sides and the back just wanting to tie that distressing in and make it look all nice and weathered. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my piece. So I'm gonna add some of this wood glue, super glue, to the bottom of my candlestick, add it to the top of my round, add some glue to the top of my candlestick, and then add my square right on top. To give it more of a finished look, I took some twine, added some hot glue to the back, stuck my twine down to that hot glue, and then I'm gonna wrap the twine around the candlestick where the candlestick and the sign meet about four to five times and then I will cut the excess off and hot glue it back down to the back. I took a little piece of twine, tied a super simple bow just by taking two loops and tying it together like you would your shoes, messing with those loops until I get it the size that I want it and then I'm just going to hot glue that to the front of my sign again where that candlestick and the sign meet. And that's all you gotta do for this one. I think this is so cute, super easy to make, and really fun addition to my home decor. This is a super simple DIY and I've never done this before so I wanted to try my hand at it. I'm going to take a little terracotta pot that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I believe you get two in a pack for $1.25. I'm going to start by giving it one good coat with my Waverly chalk paint in white and I painted the entire outside as well as a little down on the inside of the pot. Now I'm gonna take this gift tissue that I got from Hobby Lobby. It's $1.49, which I think is a really good deal, and I loved this watercolor flower look to it. So what I decided to do, I decided I didn't want this to be you know, super perfect. I wanted it to look a little bit messy, so I'm gonna start ripping pieces off of the tissue paper adding my Mod Podge to the pot and then laying my tissue paper down and then just going back over it with some Mod Podge trying to make sure everything is nice and stuck down to my pot and I just repeated this process. I just started ripping pieces off, adding it to my pot, layering pieces on top of each other. I wasn't worried about if there were wrinkles or bubbles or anything. I just took my Mod Podge, went over the top of it, and just stuck everything down as best as I could. And that's all you gotta do for this. This is super easy. There is really no technique to doing it. You're just slapping some Mod Podge on your pot, adding your tissue paper over top of it, and then adding more Mod Podge on top. And I think this is really fun. I think it's a really fun piece for spring, especially with these watercolor florals. And this was super easy to do, kind of one of those mindless crafts that there really is no technique and you don't have to be a pro crafter to be able to do this super beginner friendly all of these are very beginner friendly because this is the first time that i ever have uh you know used napkins or done a bunch of decoupaging um, so everything was just very new and i had a whole lot of fun trying out some new techniques so this one 
was a really fun project. Let me know if you've done this before. If you are a new decoupager like me, or if you have a ton of experience, give me all your tips and tricks on, uh, you know, what I could have done better. But I think this project turned out really cute. And that's it. You can stick some little greeneries inside of it or some little florals, or you can just leave it as is sitting on your shelf or a table. And it adds a really fun pop of color to your home decor. And that's it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know which project was your favorite in the comments down below. And let me know, are you a huge decoupager? Do you do a lot of napkin and tissue paper DIYs? I definitely think that I'm gonna be incorporating a lot more of them in my videos. So let me know if you have a favorite place that you like to purchase them from. I found so many cute patterns at Hobby Lobby. I think I wanna take a look at Michaels and Joann's, see what they have to offer, but I'm loving working with it. I think it's so much fun. So let me know if it's something that you like or let me know if you've never tried it before if you are a beginner like I am and if you are going to try out any of these DIYs also as another quick reminder we did release our three new subscription boxes so check that out down in the description box below we have a subscription box for craft kits every single month if you want to see everything that they have to offer or if you're currently subscribed and you'd like to upgrade to our biggest box or downgrade to just the kit without paper, you can do that as well. So I'll go ahead and leave my website linked down below and you can check out our brand new three subscription boxes that are now available for you to subscribe to. Box number three is limited. I only have about 18 more of those boxes left before they are all gone for the month. So if that is one that you wanna get, make sure that you jump on it and subscribe before they are all gone. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That really helps out my channel and helps it to grow. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you enjoy my DIYs. I'd love to have you a part of our little crafty family here on YouTube. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.